Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is episode three of our Game of Thrones series reaction. So as we work our way through the entire series of Game of Thrones, I am joined by my friends Alyssa from Mainly Movies and Tyler Calvert. So we're back yet again. Uh, we've made it to episode three. Woo! <laughs> you survived two episodes so far. <laughs> well, we're coming off of episode two, and just a quick recap. Bran is alive! Yay! Right at the end of the episode, he opened his eyes after a failed assassination attempt on his life, which Catelyn thwarted, before she herself decided to head on down to King's Landing and further investigate after she did some Sherlock Holmes work around that power that Bran fell from. Then we also got Daenerys taking control of her relationship in a way uh, by learning some new moves in the bedroom. Yeah, go her. <laughs> to lay down on Khal Drogo and try to make something of her situation. We'll see how that all starts to play out. And our main storyline, probably the biggest part of last episode, was that we went south to King's Landing with Ned Stark, Arya Stark, Sansa, as well as the Baratheons and Lannisters, where Joffrey got into a fight with Arya. Arya's direwolf Nymeria attacked to save the day and save Arya from Joffrey. Joffrey's like temper tantrum. Uh, thus, Joffrey went and tattled and completely lied about what happened. Thankfully, Arya shooed Nymeria away so she didn't get killed. But unfortunately, Lady Sansa's dire wolf had to take the blame. And that kind of came on the heel of Sansa choosing not to really tell the truth, not really lie either, but by omission her dire wolf was sacrificed. <laughs> and then, presumably, leading into this episode, we also followed Tyrion and Jon Snow as they head up towards the wall. And this episode is called Lord Snow. So, presumably, Jon will have something to do here. So, we'll see. Yay. <laughs> Yay. All right. Or it could be any number of snows, right? Isn't it this, just anybody who, uh, this is very you know, true. everybody gets the last name snow. If, if but he is the lord of the snow. <laughs> <laughs> who knew a bastard could be a lord? I don't know. But yes, maybe we meet some more bastards because as we found out last time, the wall is kind of where they're sending rapists and criminals. <laughs> Uh, yeah, who knows what kind of characters we're going to meet. Some fine gentlemen, it's probably. <laughs> yes. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this episode. The narrow sea right there. It's pretty, it's pretty okay. narrow. I was like, there's I, the I, narrow yeah. sea can, for y'all. They can get across. <laughs> it is pretty uh, yeah, narrow. What's the, what's the issue here? No, it's dark. Grand Meister I like the beachier vibes of this episode so far. <laughs> this is actually like sunlight. Are they in King's Landing already? Yes, or is just arrived. Like right. okay. okay, I like King's Landing. It looks nice. There's the throne. The Game of Thrones, oh, if you will. The throne. <laughs> I have a knack for it. The tension is high. <laughs> I can feel the tension. It must be strange for you. You served him well. Serving was safe. It sounded like a medieval burn, if I do say so myself. Let's talk of how Jamie killed the previous king. Shame you didn't say a prayer for the butcher's son. Oops. Oh man, man, <laughs> Ned, really? Ned's, man just throwing, <laughs> Ned's just throwing out all the shade in this episode. The road. Like. Be no plans until I speak to Robert. Damn, Ned, Ned is Forgive just me, uh, lords. <laughs> very angry. I had a long ride. <laughs> you fought up a dire wolf. You're a warrior, like your father. <laughs> Fought off a dire wolf? I didn't fight I don't off think, anything. Bitten, I don't think that's exactly what happened there. And the two star girls saw her. And if you don't like her, you only need to see her on formal occasions and when the time comes to make little <laughs> you just, princes. You only have to see her a few times, so even if you, if you don't like her. And if you'd rather <laughs> fuck painted whores, you'll fuck painted whores. And 
If you rather lie with poor, noble virgins, but... so be it. You are my darling boy. And the... At least she's supportive, I guess. <laughs> Do something nice with the She stalker. speaks quite like the king as you well. No, but you will. Yeah, I think they're all just The occasional kindness will spare you all sorts people. of trouble down the road. <laughs> I'm not asking. The North cannot be held. The more not Joffrey speaks, too big like, the less wild. I like him. And when the winter comes, the seven <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you, I could like him much army. less than I already did, but... The good king I... knows when to save his strength. <laughs> Starks are enemies. Starks versus the Lannisters. I knew this was coming. Is an enemy. Or I guess everyone versus the Lannisters. <laughs> Doesn't for what? The <laughs> I have favorite here. Arya is just over friend. here practicing stabbing. Or I see her, the more I like her. <laughs> Arya, don't play no games. Sticking with the pointy end. <laughs> Arya's got the basics down. But how can you let her marry someone like that? Hmm. Oh, you stumped him there. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Not Don't even gonna answer it. Fell. It's yours. Ned is such a good dad. <laughs> I can keep it. I hate your stories. Oh. I know a story. No, I guess he does on Amnesia. I hated stories. <laughs> I can tell you about in what a what a terrible story to just tell this child as he's laying there. <laughs> Newly awakened from a coma. I mean, he said he likes the scary ones, so this is what you get, Brad. <laughs> As we're zooming in on this lady. I know, she's, they're making her seem so evil. I'm guessing that Brand is, is like full on just crippled because he has not moved at all. <laughs> you still don't he hasn't moved anything. at all except from, from the neck up. He's like, that's it. Why is his why is his little like brother never checking up, up on him at all? <laughs> Whoever the other one Still is. Too many. Uh, Ricker, right? Rickon. 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 Yeah, where where is where is he? I need like he's not even gonna check up on him. Rickon's just running wild Welcome through Winterfell. Nobody Lady knows Stark. where he is. Would you mind? Follow me, Lady Stark. Oh. Somebody knew she was arriving at King's Landing. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> My little birds are everywhere, even in the north. This bear guy is an uh, interesting character. Jon Snow is just like beating up random people. Good choreography, though. It ain't it. Well, Lord Snow. <laughs> Man, just gonna take him out right in front of everybody. Quick tempers, slow minds. I just have a feeling that that guy's evil. It's an improvement. <laughs> Sick burn, Jon Snow. <laughs> He's like a little brother to me, Ned. He would never betray my trust. I'll try to keep you alive. I think that's for her uh, sake. foreshadowing. <laughs> I don't believe. I've never been able I think to I think he's definitely anything. the type that would betray someone's it. trust. <laughs> 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 well, he kind of deserved that slap. Let <laughs> I me <mean>, go. <laughs> They have a very strange relationship, I must say. <laughs> yeah, I think you could say that. <laughs> to put it lightly. <laughs> the show is making me like the Starks more and more, and the Lannisters less and less. <laughs> Caved in his breastplate. Probably shattered every rib he had. Jeez, this over king him. is this king is ridiculous. Yeah. Lancel Lannister. Who named you some <laughs> half of a stutter? There's no more wine. Is that what empty means? <laughs> Surrounded by Lannisters. That's a dangerous Every territory with the Lannisters here. <laughs> That's dark. Command the dragon. I am lord of the seven kingdoms. I don't take orders from savages. I think savages Aquaman's gonna snaps. come in here and beat the Did crap out of this me? guy. Well, somebody definitely did. Kill these Dothraki dogs! Don't do it. Shall we return to the Kalisar? <laughs> Just ignore him. <laughs> Just gonna take take the horse with <laughs> coat though. Is that like a an old version of an an old timey version of an elevator? <laughs> you gotta have some way to get up the wall. Like the slowest moving elevator of all time. Look how high they gotta go. Reminds me of a uh, like national treasure. 
how cute his little face is. Grazing to death. Better than no one. Oh. Man, he just humbled him real quick. Whenever you join Tyrion, the conversation is sure to be lively. <laughs> the interesting thing is two people out of their element with Tyrion up here and Ned amongst So, you're heading down to King's Landing too? Yeah. Day after tomorrow. That's true. Your change, Khaleesi. Are they trying to talk about her top leaving pregnant or something? Easy to handle. Her blessing from the it's Great Stallion. <laughs> But a man is that they're God, or is that what they're calling <laughs> Aquaman? I don't know. That's a good point. That's a good question, actually. Is he the stallion? Well, at least they're learning to communicate, I guess. I will still not condone their relationship. <laughs> Just pay it off the side of the wall. That's what he said he wanted to do. Was this mission? The episode or the first episode? That, that was his whole goal. <laughs> what a guy. You know, dancing uh, master, maybe a teacher of some kind. <laughs> he seems like a very eccentric you man. So, I didn't notice before that she's left-handed. I feel like Boy, if this show uh, had like started last year or the year before, this would have been a character that Taika Waititi that would play. The grip. Yeah, I can see that. It does feel very Taika-ish. All this talk of dancing. I like metaphors in this. All uh, men are made of water. Okay, yeah. If you pick a metaphor, Alyssa, or the truth. The water leaks out. <laughs> and they die. Ah. <laughs> Ned's over here just having like a, a war flashback. <laughs> yeah, he's like PTSD <laughs> over there. Watching his little daughter train. <laughs> That's what I mean. He was just having a moment there at the end. Looks like. Just like war flashback. Well, we met a lot of characters in this episode. <laughs> yeah, some some dude with a finger. <laughs> like it's, uh, oh, I was like, what? what? They all have fingers. Bear, bear. <laughs> well, it, yeah, but his name was like no, I know. Finger. <laughs> little finger. Little finger. Well, it's not a very common name, especially in, <laughs> especially in this. That's why it stuck out to me. All right, so. How are you both feeling about episode three, Lord Snow, Tyler? Uh, uh, I think it was probably the most boring of the three episodes, <laughs> but it was fine overall. Until the end. I mean, I would say the, la the third, last third of it was probably the most exciting out of the, most of the episode. All right. Alyssa? Yeah, I'd agree that this one, it seems like it's mostly kind of set up for other things coming um, and didn't really do too much. We, like... They left off the last episode with like this big cliffhanger, like <laughs> revelation of Bran opening his eyes, and it's like he listens to a story, and that's it. Like, <laughs> you know, nothing came from that really, and we didn't yeah. see any wolves. The, the day I wear my joyous I'm wolf not. shirt, <laughs> We're like not a single Fit wolf. Fitting. Um, so yeah, uh, it was okay. I mean, I didn't dislike it. I guess. But. <laughs> yeah, Going same. through. We arrive at King's Landing. We finally have made it. Ed and the daughters, as well as obviously the Baratheons and Lannisters, as does Catelyn Stark, arrive at uh, King's Landing, the capital. But she awkwardly is like greeted by some guards who escort her to a brothel. And it seems that Littlefinger, AKA Peter Baelish, as well as Lord Varys, both knew that Catelyn was coming down to King's Landing. So according to various, it's his little birds he has everywhere, including Winterfell, that alerted him of what was happening. So. What were your impressions? We just talked about uh, Littlefinger a little bit. We'll get back to him. What are your impressions of Lord Varys so far? Seems interesting. He seems like a character who definitely knows a lot more than he's leading on just because he, se he seems like he knows somehow in some shape or form everything that's going on. I'm curious to see how that's going to be explored, whether it's be the little birds. Of, I don't know if in, in this world, that could be literal. I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> this, like, so we'll see. I mean, he seems like an interesting character going forward just with, uh, he seems like he has a lot of knowledge and shadiness to him. Yeah, I think he seems a little suspicious along with uh, 
little finger there. I, I think yeah. they they are certainly in on this and, and kind of know about it and they're setting uh cat I think they're kind of setting her up or setting Ned up as a result. I don't know. There's something a little suspicious <laughs> going on there. Nope. It's definitely a trap. And also little <laughs> little I know you said we were gonna be getting the little finger, but also he he clearly still has the the hots for Catelyn from back when they were whatever. Um and so there's I was gonna say there's uh, definitely gonna be something there. He's gonna set Ned up trying to kill Ned for to <laughs> get Catelyn. <laughs> Uh, I was like, uh, so we did learn that uh, he mentioned Catelyn Tully earlier, uh, which is Catelyn Stark's maiden name, uh, and their little, his love for her from when they were younger and their friendship, as it seems. Um, but it seems maybe both he and Catelyn are both trying to play on that old relationship. Um, he's certainly trying to win her faith and work this whole thing, saying he will help them figure all of this out and keep Ned safe in the capital. And then Catelyn hints to Ned that obviously she still sees that he has feelings for her, maybe implying that she's trying to play Littlefinger uh, based on that emotion before she leaves, heading out back to Winterfell. So this is a very strange dynamic <laughs> that took place yeah. after Ned choked Littlefinger out <laughs> outside up against the, the wall. <laughs> Just up against the wall in front of everybody. Yeah. We also saw uh, King Robert Baratheon in a very interesting scene as well, just kind of telling war stories to one of his knights. We learned that he's pretty much surrounded by Lannisters. Uh, his little uh, wine boy, if you will. <laughs> Literally, that's what, that was his job. That's what it, that he was the wine person. Was also, uh, his name's Lancel Lannister, as Robert Baratheon laughs in his face about. Yeah, like any of these other names are less like <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, like, when you're named yeah. Robert, or Rick or whatever. You're okay. <laughs> I guess Brand. Well, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> we didn't get much with uh, King Robert, but how how are you feeling about him uh, uh, in this whole scenario right now? I mean, he's entertaining. I I don't mean he's. I mean, he seems. I mean, we didn't get too much of him this episode, so I can't really speak on it too much. But I mean, he's. He's definitely an interesting king. He's def- he's def- definitely out there, very, very, uh, very, very crude, very, very rude to anyone, I guess, because he was just the way he shoot off that Lannister because he didn't get any wine. But uh, I don't he know. Seems a, they, yeah, we'll see. He seems a bit darker now. Like, I mean, his story about his first kill, he's just like so excited about like crushing a guy's ribs and like killing him after he begs for his life and so it's kind of i don't know he he doesn't seem quite as jolly as uh, as we uh, perceived him in the first couple episodes he definitely <laughs> has a mean streak after he's got a after dark killing side. lady um he uh yeah so i don't know i don't i don't really like him much but to be honest i don't think i like any of the lannisters Oh, come on, Tyrion. Oh, t- Tyrion, Tyrion, I forgot. He's one of them. He's okay. He's one of them. He's just not around them right now, so it's, it's easy to detach him from the rest currently. He's just do- he's doing his own thing somewhere, usually. But we did. We got more of Jamie Lannister in this episode, uh, as we learn he is the one who killed the former uh, king. Who he proclaims his last words were "burn them all." But Jamie, who is one of the the knights, the king's knights, uh, stabbed him in the back and got him, as we heard at least twice, I think, in this episode, from both Ned and Robert. Got that nickname, King Slayer. There was definitely tension everywhere Jamie went this episode. He had tension with Cersei uh, when they met back up. A very yeah. awkward exchange between the two. There was some high tension between he and Ned as they talked in front of the throne. And then there was clearly a lot of tension between he and Robert Baratheon when Robert pretty much just kind of showboated his power over Jamie uh, by calling him in there. So how, how are we feeling about boy incest twin currently (laughs) oh man i don't know i mean he's obviously a very terrible person just you know in many (laughs) different facets but uh i don't know i mean he's just like that the tension between him and like everyone is gonna probably come to a head at some point whether it's between 
Jamie and his sister and whatever relationship, romance, drama, mess that we're going to get in with them over time, plus the stuff with Bran and then Ned. Poor, poor Ned. But because they're playing, because it's obviously, it seems like basically the Lannisters versus everyone. And like Jamie is like one of the key like points of that. That seems to be causing a lot of drama. How did your feelings toward him develop, Alyssa? Yeah, I mean, I guess I still dislike him just as much as I did before. Except now, after uh, Tyler mentioned the the Shrek print, so like that's all I can see now every time I <laughs> I, I see right. this guy. So I was like that, but then incest twin, and it's a very competing <laughs> image in my mind, and so I, uh, <laughs> I I'm not a fan of him. But uh, yeah, I, I doubt I will be, but we'll see. Yeah, and then we got a little bit with Joffrey and Cersei, and we see that Joffrey no longer likes Sansa. <laughs> no. He, his infatuation ended with that whole ordeal next to the river. He doesn't want to marry her anymore, and he views this all of the Starks as enemies, and his mother didn't disagree that they're enemies. She instead kind of reinforced that, saying, everybody who isn't us is our enemy. But she did, in some ways, try to advise him a little bit of, against his vicious impulse. <laughs> Even with that new kind of dark story of Robert, um, quite a difference between, like, Joffrey and Robert <laughs> when it comes to Prince, the first prince in line, and the current king. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, other than that, we didn't get too much of them, which I'm sure you're both just so broken up about. <laughs> I can't stand yeah. Rob- Joffrey. He's such a little brat. <laughs> it's already like, over I, for I you. I can't wait till I, like, I can already see either he is going to become king, like something's going to happen to the current king, and then this Joffrey, like, crazy kid is going to be, like, doing crazy stuff. Or <laughs> Arya is just going to beat the crap out of him, and then with needles she's going to, like, you know, be able to train and she's gonna like yeah she's gonna do something to him i think well, aria we got quite a bit of her this episode so ned does find her with that sword she doesn't rat out her brother john who gave it to her she just kind of omits the truth on, on who gave her the sword but in the end uh ned is fine with it he he, he gives in and says you know what? Okay, you can keep the sword. It's fine. And Love Ned. <laughs> goes a little bit further and actually gets her a, a trainer in Serio uh, Pharrell. Dance instructor. <laughs> yes, a dance instructor. So, all about the dance. <laughs> so we ended the episode, as you said, with PTSD Ned watching <laughs> on as Aria is in her first lesson with Serio. So we are escalating with Aria and her little badass fighting skills. <laughs> and you still love Arya uh, there, Alyssa? Yes, I do. She's still by far my favorite character, and I think <laughs> going to be one of the more interesting ones as things kind of escalate through the season and seasons, probably. Because I, I don't know. Maybe she dies real quick. I don't know, but I hope not, because I actually <laughs> like her. Mowing down the children. I mean, well, we already did. We both I already got rid of the boy. butcher boy. <laughs> And <laughs> Tyler, how are you feeling about little Arya's progression uh, this episode? I think she's probably one of the more entertaining storylines that's going on, even though it's not really like, I guess, a lot of this drama in the storyline so far definitely seems to be wrapped around the, the Lannisters and the Starks in some shape or form. But her, she's kind of like, kind of almost kind of doing her own thing. Obviously, she had that conflict with Joffrey, but now she's kind of just, I'm going to train to be a warrior which I think could be interesting depending on how the path goes in the future seasons or season, as Alyssa alluded to, just because you never know, she could just die next episode and just shock, <laughs> shock us all. I hope but. not. Then I'm done. If she dies in the next episode, <laughs> like, we're we're four episodes, we're done with this. <laughs> but yeah, I think, I, think Arya's a, I think Arya's one of the better characters. She's not my favorite, but she's definitely probably in my top three or four. Not your favorite. <laughs> oh, you like Tyrion, though. We, so. we already Tyrion. kind of... She gave a, a nice guy. little list uh, on who she's thinking of when she's training, apparently. She hates everyone. Uh, hates the Hound. Why, why? She hates Joffrey. <laughs> she hates Cersei. And Sansa. Hates the King. Yeah. Well, that's she's, why I love that scene. She softened a little bit on Sansa. Her dad got go- her to soften <laughs> a little bit. Because they just straight up, they straight up just show her just practicing stabbing at the table. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. 
Yes, and then we also did get some with Tyrion and Jon Snow up at the wall. So Jon has arrived. He's now part of what they call the Night's Watch, who man that big old ice wall. <laughs> and Jon is whooping all of those other boys' butts. <laughs> Just no mercy at the beginning. And Tyrion kind of talks him into being a little bit nicer, not just completely humiliating them every time they go out to spar. Yeah, uh, that was basically John. <laughs> this episode talked a little yeah. bit to his uncle, um, who is getting ready to go on a, a ranger adventure beyond the wall. We'll tell John, you can't come. Sorry, you're not a ranger. You're still just a, a little Night's Watch boy who just got here. Um, and then Tyrion <laughs> roaming around, basically. <laughs> Like you said, doing almost nothing at the wall other than being <laughs> off of Well, it. I was going to say, he fulfilled his dream, so. <laughs> yeah. Good for him. Good for him. But we did meet um, the Captain Commander Mormont um, as he kind of spoke to Tyrion. And we learned that the, the wall is scarce of resources. And Mormont asks Tyrion to uh, approach his sister, Cersei, about giving them aid. So... Yeah, we got a, another, I guess, a more formal introduction to the wall. How, how are y'all feeling about that atmosphere now? Uh, the wall's the most cold. boring part for me. <laughs> like, I yeah. gotta say, like, <laughs> in terms of setting and then just the people there, I'm like, I don't care. Like, it's, I don't know. I'm sure it's gonna be cool when we get the blue-eyed, like, white walker, whatever walker things coming through. But right now, the, the wall, the, the elevator, I think, was the coolest part of it to me. But <laughs> The classic elevator. Yeah. The OG elevator up in here. <laughs> what about you, Tyler? How do you feel about the wall in our intro to it? I kind of agree, because I think those were probably the less interesting parts when we do go to the wall, whether it be John, you know, just, just discussing things or the fights, the fights that they had. I mean, it seems kind of unfair. Like, I think they alluded to it a little bit with Terry and talking about how Jon Snow has, like, been trained to, you know, do all this stuff, and he's just fighting these, like, random people that, like, obviously don't have any sort of skills, because they're all just, like, terrible people. I remember they were saying, like, oh, they were just sending all of the terrible people there with, like, no skills or anything. It was, it was not the best fight choreography. <laughs> I'm hoping that since it's season one, maybe they'll get better as the fights go on, but uh, that was definitely a very sloppily directed choreography if my, my opinion at least some more fun names for you Alyssa. they just said them in passing but we have pip and grim up there at the wall those pip, two pip boys with this, pip uh, lord of the rings right <laughs> close no pip that's in. close ah. in, yeah. especially as tyler noted finally halfway through or so we cross the narrow sea over to the targaryens and the dothraki as they went on their adventure and daenerys Seems to have taken her control in the bedroom out a little bit more, getting a little bit more assured of herself. And that makes her brother Viserys very angry. And he comes flying out of nowhere and in her face, ready to attack her for commanding him around. But we see that the Dothraki, obviously, don't really have that respect for him. He can yell about being the king of the seven kingdoms, uh, but they just kind of like roped him down like a cattle. <laughs> but, that was a great part of the episode. Yeah, I was going to say, that was probably one of the more satisfying <laughs> moments this whole episode. But much to the Dothrakis and her little maidens dismay, Daenerys is still the pro brother says don't harm him let him go let him be then we find out that she's pregnant um and we get those allusions to the great stallion <laughs> um how do you feel about daenerys and her being pregnant that whole thing kind of kind of interesting because she seemed actually like genuinely comfortable with paul drago or whatever his name is is that it? I, always, I just, you I get really close. Drogo, Drogo. Uh, I keep calling him Drogo. Aquaman. So like, I, I gotta actually like learn these real names. <laughs> so she seemed more comfortable with him uh, this time. So now I'm, I'm kind of doubting my whole idea that she's setting him up and like that this was all just, I don't know. I, I, I think I like her less because of that. The um, Stockholm syndrome but, is real. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't like her as much this time. It's not horrible. I, I hope she gets better when those dragons hatch. 
yeah, the little be... the prehistoric like incubator that they're trying to <laughs> work. That with. that was very. I liked that. That was good. <laughs> um, but I, I've realized that now, now that I don't like her as much, I don't think there's a single blonde character in the show that I like. <laughs> they're not. Come none on. of the blondes are near the top for you. <laughs> Uh, Tyler, you, you said you still can't you still can't get on board with that as we saw them laying together and as you said, yeah. much more comfortable with him. Uh, how are you feeling about that whole Daenerys pregnant Khal Drogo business? I figured it was almost inevitable that she would get pregnant just based on almost all of their interactions being quite physical. <laughs> but, like everything uh, we've seen of the two? <laughs> that's what I mean. I figured it was inevitable at some point or another. I guess happy for them if whatever happens with that. I mean, other than that, though, I mean, at least it seems like Daenerys is slowly becoming more of an actual character with a personality and, you know, desires, even if some of them are questionable desires, but <laughs> desires nonetheless. So we'll see if the evolution of her character keeps going and uh, maybe we'll get away from her brother because her brother is clearly a terrible person. I guess I heard her desires are a little less questionable than some of the other characters, though. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's also true. Uh, and we learned a little bit more about uh, Jorah, who is like their guy, their protector. He's their friend sworn to Viserys and Daenerys. Um, oh, is he the guy that rode off at the end? Yes. When so he found we out learned that, she was pregnant. Oh. that he betrayed his father and that is why he is out and about here with them, <laughs> presumably. <laughs> oh, he's headed off somewhere for some reason. He really didn't give an indication to why. He I guess he needs going to tell the brother that she's pregnant, right? Like, <laughs> Maybe. I don't well, know. Presumably, the brother is with them somewhere. Uh, they just made him walk. <laughs> the He'll John Thraki just look. said, you walk. You don't get back <laughs> on the horse, you walk. <laughs> Gotta go pick him up from wherever he is. <laughs> Gotta go find walking. him in the, in the grass, in the yeah. tall grass out there before the Stephen King novels come to get him. Almost forgot about that he even showed up. Bran does wake up also hear this story about the, this long winter that took place. Um, All the season metaphors. <laughs> so I think they're partial metaphors, but they're also like the seasons in this world are really strange to where you just go years and years and years. Like Arya in her little lifetime has never seen a winter. So she's only been alive during summer in Winterfell. Uh, <laughs> and so- what a life. Uh, these winters come and they're super dramatic and last for a long time and spread darkness. So apparently it is coming again. And that is. And do, do the White Walkers walk during winter? Is that the <laughs> idea that they can only come out in the snow? Yeah. So, well, I think that was part of it with that woman. She said that that was the first time they appeared was in that winter she was telling of. And they came for some of the first people around and all of that fun. Uh, fantasy <laughs> jargon. Yeah. <laughs> and see Bran's wolf. Uh, he wasn't chilling by him this episode, though it, it would be we hard to tell. We still don't know its name. It's, it's just difficult to tell with that dang blanket he has. You know, <laughs> the wolf could be there. We just like didn't see it camouflaged laying next to him. <laughs> we did not see Rick on again. This he's, episode. he's camouflaged in the crowds. <laughs> yeah, he's somewhere. I mean, <laughs> so we didn't see his wolf there. either because yeah, we haven't seen him. We didn't see Rob's wolf or John's. Nymeria is <laughs> still like off. Uh, Nymeria is yeah, roaming somewhere. <laughs> we'll all come back eventually, I guess. No, I guess I'm glad y'all asked if John brought his wolf because we still have not seen him up there at the wall yet. Uh, there. Does the wolf go up in the elevator with him? <laughs> Somewhere cool. roaming the wall. <laughs> Maybe he's camouflaged too. Maybe his like white fur just blends into the snow and the ice. Perfect, and perfect he was, camouflage. He was in the background somewhere. We just didn't quite see him sleeping in the corner. <laughs> Yeah, the only wolf we've gotten names for are still Nymeria and Lady. I don't think they've given us the names of any of the other wolves is, so far. And Lady's no longer with and us. And Lady is no so. longer with us. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was basically the episode. As you said, it, it was a lot of setting up things. After this episode, uh, I think I know the answer for favorite still with Alyssa, but uh, fave characters and least fave characters so far. Alyssa, we'll start uh, with you. Yeah, so uh, definitely Arya is still my favorite. Um, I like Tyrion. He was, I, I mean, 
he's not my favorite, I guess, but like I, I do like him. I like um Ed. I'm so I was like I can't think of his name. I like him <laughs> more now. He's starting to grow on me. I, I was kind of apathetic to him before, but he's starting to grow on me now. I think I dislike pretty much everybody else. So Who, who's the highest I'm, I'm kinda, on the I'm disdain apathetic. level? Oh man, fucking Joffrey kid. I hate him. Um so I don't like him. Even in his minor appearance, it was enough to I just, know, put just, your skin crawling. Him, the, uh, well, both the incest twins, but especially the, the male incest twin. Um, those are probably my two least favorite in this episode. And Tyler? Uh, obviously, I think Tyrion is still my number one. I think he's just the most charismatic and interesting of all the characters. But uh, it would probably be... Other than him, as far as people I like, it would definitely be Arya and Ned, of course. I think Ned is slowly growing on me each episode because he seems like he's actually, like, a really good person. Uh, as far as least favorites, uh, I guess Viserys is still up there. He's, you know, he's still a terrible person. Although it was very satisfying to see him get some of, some comeuppance <laughs> for being a jerk. Hopefully that continues in episodes following. Uh, other than him... Uh, definitely most of the Lannisters, you know, the other ones besides Tyrion, so Jaime, Cersei, Joff- Joffrey, uh, the king is slowly becoming not one of my favorites anymore, as he's slowly becoming a worse person. Uh, maybe I'll throw in, uh, what's his face, uh, Littlefinger, too, the finger man. <laughs> just the, the first impression right off the bat was, <laughs> was I, just <laughs> sent him straight down. <laughs> I don't trust, I don't trust him. He seems, he, he just has a face that I just don't trust. Okay, so I guess that'll lead us into predictions. So I guess you could you could start there. What 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 are your predictions when it comes to that pact between Catelyn, Littlefinger, and Ned that was made this episode? I think there's going to be betrayal. <laughs> I don't trust I, by, them. on Littlefinger's uh, accord. I assume is what you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't trust I don't trust him. He just ha- he just has that demeanor. I just don't trust him at all. <laughs> so that's definitely one thing I would predict that <laughs> and uh, some, mer- some more drama between the Starks and the Lannisters. Uh, hopefully we'll get some more stuff at the wall, some more exciting things. I want to see some fights between the people at the wall, maybe the White Walkers, just because they're, they're being alluded to so much. And I'm just here, eager to see more of them after <laughs> we basically opened the series with them we in, did. In, sh- in shadow. So, yeah, those are, I guess, some of my predictions, I guess. Okay. Alyssa? Yeah, I agree that there's going to be some betrayal there with Littlefinger. I, he's really suspicious, and I don't like him. Um, I think, again, I, I don't think it's going to be a, like, next episode thing, but there's definitely going to be something going on with Joffrey. Either he's going to rise to a higher position, um, or um, Ari is going to kick his butt <laughs> or possibly kill him. <laughs> Um, (laughs) so I think there's gonna be something there I'm hoping predicting that there's more wolves in future episodes Um, (laughs) I think uh I I don't know I think there's gonna be something going on with Daenerys um I'm I'm betting what I think is gonna happen is when she has this baby that's when the eggs the dragon eggs are gonna hatch right because it all has to do with the moon and now we've got this like great stallion involved somehow uh and so there's gonna be lots of uh um I don't know, metaphorical connections because they, they love metaphors in this world. How do you think Viserys will react to the, the pregnancy and birth of his little sister's child? I he think, doesn't seem yeah. very supportive. <laughs> yeah, I think he, well, I mean, who knows? It, we, do we know for sure it's uh, Drag- Dragos? I mean, <laughs> like... And more so drama. Who knows? There might be some... If this thing comes out, it's just like complete blonde hair. Oh. Like, we're like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> We can have a Mari Povich moment in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <That'd> <laughs> Who's be the father? That is about it for this episode. Perfect. So uh, thank you both once again for being on the channel to watch episode three, Lord Snow of Game of Thrones. Why don't you both let everyone know where they can find you, starting with Alyssa. Um, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of the places at Mainly Movies. And Tyler? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at It's Tyler Calvert and Tyler Calvert all here on YouTube. Perfect. And I hope that if you did enjoy this reaction, you hit that like button. 
down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on our latest reactions as well as all of the other new videos posted here on the channel. Also, make sure that you are joining in on the discussion. What are your thoughts on this episode? And of course, uh, your thoughts on our predictions and <laughs> analysis <laughs> of the episode. Let us know either in the comment section down below or you can hit any of us up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your continued support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.